Thanks so much for being here. I'm Lorelai Shamayo, and this is our MeWe Awakening panel for energizing body, mind, heart, and soul. We have events throughout the Northwest starting again in October, and we have lots and lots of online events. Tonight is our panel. We have six practitioners on the panel, uh, six practitioners on the panel, and we will be um, introducing ourselves, sharing about the theme, and then answering your questions, questions from the audience. It's free to be here to listen and learn. Um, it's a small price to ask a question of the panel. Um, yeah, so fierce intimacy and healthy boundaries. So that's, uh, we'll definitely talk about the theme and share about how that's important to us and our work and how we apply our work to that. And you can ask us questions on anything. It doesn't have to be specifically about that theme. And chances are we will bring some of our wisdom about this theme to whatever it is that you, you do ask. All right, um, in the chat, I put some information about practitioners and information about how to ask a question. If you'd like to ask a question, of the panel tonight, we request that you pay first. It's 16 to 24 sliding scale, $10 for BIPOC doing our part to make reparations. Um, yeah, so it's up to you what you pay. Um, we're excited just to have you here and to be in this conversation all together. Um, yeah, so many, like just, it's a huge diverse topic. So lots of things we can explore. Let's have the practitioners introduce themselves and practitioners go ahead and take, um, maybe let's take two minutes to introduce yourself. Aim to not talk about the theme as much in the beginning when you introduce yourself. I know um, like Joy in particular, it's really your specialty. So you might talk about it some in your intro, but then we'll come back and we'll talk much more about the theme. So if you want, you can even do just a minute, do a shorter intro of yourself in the beginning. And then there's so much about the theme we can share. So I want people to get to know all of who you are and what you do um, just as part of this. All right, so maybe let's play with the same order as before. So I think we have the shift witch first and then Susie and then Henry and then Daniel and then Joy and then I'll go. And um, yeah, so let's aim um, just to speak generally more about all of our work first. So go ahead, Susie. Yeah, two-ish minutes or so, it's yours. Oh, let's let shift witch go. Sorry, shift witch. I just like Susie. I'm just so like Susie's here all the time. Shift witches first. Thank you, Susie. All right, shift witch. That's okay. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jamie, the shift witch. And I hope you make shifts so radical, they must be magical. And you can find me at theshiftwitch.com. I do these, all right, I help you create these shifts through energetic movement and empowered healing. The way that I help move you through that is mostly through yoga and nice, slow, deep movements like yin yoga specifically. Also yoga nidra, which is like a really nice conscious nap where you just lay comfortably in your home, connect into Zoom and just listen to the sound of my voice for a little while. And you get to disconnect and truly relax and give yourself a really nice break. I also teach transnational dance. Most people know as belly dance. And I absolutely love the movements and the way that you get to become truly acquainted with how your body moves and what it is capable of in that dance. It is a way to not just know your body, but begin to love it exactly how it is, which is the thing that I stress more than anything in all of my work. It is loving your body as it is right now not an hour from now, not two years from now, not the way it was 10 years ago. It's about loving who you are in this very moment. And all of the work I do is, is focused in on that and to hone in on feeling good from the inside out. So that is what I do. And uh, I actually do have an event special. I'm sorry, Lorelai, I didn't get to give it to you before so you can put it in the chat. Um, but I am offering a um, free intro session just to sit and talk with me and see if we would be a good fit that I can help you out either with some coaching, if you want to try out one of my movement classes, or even the yoga nidra class, I would absolutely love to have you. So you can find me at theshiftwitch.com. Um, you can also email me at theshiftwitch at gmail.com. I'm so glad you're here tonight, and I can't wait to hear your questions. So thank you. Thanks so much, Shift Witch. Going first. All right, Susie is second. 
identify some health, healthy boundaries, but we're not talking about the theme right now. So um, I'm Susie Parker Goins and I am with Blue Lightning Healing. I'm a channel, so I bring through Divine to talk to you, to, to help you connect with your, with your guides in an accessible way so that you can establish a very good relationship with them, call on them when you need them, talk to them, exchange ideas and perspectives, and they come through me and I can physically manifest for manifest them for you so that you can talk to them on your own and recognize that inner, the energy that you're seeing. I'm also an energy healer. I can do body scans to help you identify if you've got blockages you're holding on to, whether it's past trauma or emotions, even past life issues coming forward. I, I can, I love looking at past lives and helping you talk to that personality and identify what the wisdom is that they have for you and to release them so that you don't have to hang on to their stuff anymore. Um, I have a podcast called Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. I'm, yeah, let's see, I'm, I'm uploading like 141 the 141st episode coming up. Um, yeah, I'm excited. And that's where I talk about things that get me excited or talk to people who know things I don't know so that I don't have to do all the research. But, you know, you'll see a lot of people, you'll hear a lot of people on there who have so much fabulous information on there. Um, you can find me at bluelightninghealing.com. Uh, and that's where I have links to my podcast. You can also go to anchor.fm or Spotify or Amazon Music to, um, to find Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. I have a special, which is 20% off, and you go to my website, sign up for whatever you want to have done there, and put in MeWe20 to get 20% off of whatever uh, you've, you've asked for. And you can reach me at Suzy, S-U-S-Y, at bluelightninghealing.com. Thanks so much, and looking forward to a really cool and and, and really wow. fabulous uh, panel. Thanks. Thanks so much, Susie. Henry is third. Hi, everybody. I'm Henry India Holden, and you can get a hold of me at henryindiaholden.com. I am a, a spiritual director, a tarotist, and a certified life coach, and I specialize in two areas. The first being helping you connect with your purpose and also uh, create an action plan of how to actually manifest your purpose once you know what it is. It's kind of like getting on intimate terms with your purpose. And uh, the other thing is uh, deepening your intimate relationship with the divine or higher power or universe. However, that is for you. It doesn't have to be any specific way that like my own, it can be whatever it is. And this is about vulnerability. And I think that's going to come up a lot this evening. And so I use my different modalities to help you with that. And I have a special as well, $30 for 30 minutes, $50 for 50 minutes. And also, if you want to schedule a session, but you're just not sure, you can uh, go to calendly.com forward slash Henry India H and you can see that there's a free convo that you can um, uh, schedule a meeting so it's a 20 minute conversation where you can find out if we uh, if you would like to work with me if you we're a good fit so I'm really looking forward to this evening yay thanks so much Henry all right Daniel is next yes hi Daniel Steinmetz here uh, with moving deeper wellness I'm a licensed body worker and a personal wellness consultant. And I integrate the lived experience of 25 years of uh, licensure in three states by now, and 30 years of living and exploring and experimenting with healthy lifestyles, choices, exercise, nutrition, et cetera, et cetera. And the larger container is more decades than that of surrendering to a spiritual uh, process in life and how that changes me and informs my choices and teaches me humility. Let's see, what else would I, would, would I say? My work is in all respects of body-based whole person wellness intention. I do one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions, which is the heart of what I do, and also classes and trainings. I'm transitioning now, thanks to COVID matters, 
to predominantly online. So when we can be back in person, I still intend to be online because it's time for global community and global service for my part. What else would I say? I think I will leave it there for now. Thanks so much, Daniel. All right, Joy, you're next. Hi, I'm Joy. And you know, I've had 50 years of unusual active meditation and been to India three times. And I know how to help you relax while in an intimate experience. And I can help you on the phone and on Zoom to be able to notice your sensations, communicate about your sensations, even learn touch, as I said before, um, and special methods of touch, tricks, I call them, that I've learned over the 20 years that I've been massaging bo uh, Tantra bodies uh, in Tantra. And I have uh, some books that I have written, and I'm really excited about it because they are the essence of what I've been doing all these years and they're $20 each. And uh, one is how to not be premature again and how to last longer. And the other one is how to please a woman and how to touch better. And the other is an audio that is meant for men and extending pleasure. And uh, so I'm very excited that that's available on my website, uh, chantrabytelephone.com. I do these phone sessions that I mentioned and, uh, you know, for women, I think that uh, the book about touch really is really aimed toward women more than anything, uh, because it's so simple that I think it's wonderful that I'd like to share it. And so that's what I do. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I love to talk and chat on the phone. I do give a free uh, 10 minute or so, or even longer chat to figure out if what I do is what you need. So you can call me, tantrabytelephone.com. Thanks. Thanks so much, Joy. And I'm Morelai Shimayo. I'm an intuitive eye reader and a body psychology coach. I my work in matchmaking, conscious online dating, um, relationship coaching, um, yeah, all kinds of, of areas of getting more in touch with who we are, expressing ourselves authentically, making choices that really support us being in the world. My main modalities, the intuitive eye reading and the body psychology coaching, the intuitive eye readings, I believe that we all read eyes all the time, like eyes are a window to the soul. And you can get a sense of how you read eyes. If you imagine when you meet someone with dark sunglasses and you can't see their eyes, there's so much missing. And as soon as you see their eyes, there's so much there. We all pick up so much about each other and make all sorts of choices subconsciously. We don't realize um, based on what we see in people's eyes. And then body psychology coaching, really eye readings in a way is like a kind of a subset of body psychology work. Body psychology work is being aware of our bodies, the messages in our bodies, feelings and emotions, how they show up in our bodies. Being aware of this, being able to respond to this, feeling full waves of feelings and making choices that support us also, when we notice that we're stuck, noticing in our body that we're stuck, or emotion flow that we're stuck, being able to utilize our body and our awareness to shift and get back into flow. So those are the main tools that I use in working with people, helping them be authentic and real and uh, make choices that are in support of their aliveness and other people's aliveness. All right, well, let's talk a bit about the theme. So fierce intimacy and healthy boundaries. Um, and maybe oh, I should say a little more about myself. I get all distracted, me or the, the event, me or the event. Um, my sessions are offered at a discount tonight too. So 40% off. So um, $100 per hour to do a session. Um, if you're here tonight and you sign up the next few days and mention you're here at the event and it's $60 an hour BIPOC. I always offer a lower price for BIPOC as doing my part to make reparations. I wanna ask a question to the panel tonight. We also have a lower price for BIPOC folks for um, doing our part. All right, at least taking a step towards doing our part. So much to do, so much to repair. Well, let's see. So yeah, fierce intimacy and healthy boundaries, big, big topic. We all bring our own different perspectives to it. Um, I mentioned, uh, I think the Facebook Live, the, the specific theme, and evidently it's used by others too. I know I saw, I think it was Henry had a Facebook post and I was noticing that other people using a similar language. 
Um, I studied with Robert and Diane Masters, which do, um, they do some of the somatic psychotherapy work that I've studied. And when I was teaching some of their material, I made up the title Fierce Intimacy and Healthy Boundaries. So that's where tonight's title specifically comes from. And yeah, these are great words. So lots of people use them. So I'm going to have the other practitioners share a bit first. And then, um, yeah, so we all, let's go around. Everyone can share a bit and then we can just jump in and, um, and share more too. Don't worry if you don't get all that you want to say right out in the first round. So we can go ahead and start shift switch. We can start with you and wind our way around again. And then, yeah. And then we'll be asking, we'll be answering questions from the audience. I put the info in the chat about how to pay. I'll go check and see if anyone's already paid and wants to be in line to ask a question. And if you do pay to ask a question, please, if you could let us know in chat, let me know in chat so that I make sure I get you in line. I'd appreciate it. All right, shift switch. Thank you. So the reason that I was attracted to being on this panel was because, first of all, fierce intimacy to me is truly, truly, truly loving yourself. That is where all intimacy comes from. You have to be completely and truly filled with your own self-love before you can move that out into the world, which leads to the second half, which are boundaries. And boundaries are the way you do this in the world. Boundaries are a beautiful and very healthy thing to have. And not just with strangers, like we think especially because of the last year, you know, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. This has nothing to do with that. This is all about boundaries where you are honoring your truth, where you're honoring your selfhood, and that you are not allowing anyone else to alter or invade that space of self. And that includes family, that includes partners, that includes friends, that includes acquaintances. So it is all of those things combined or it is all of those situations rather, where having healthy boundaries makes you just a much more healthy person. And the more you can filter with these boundaries and keep out you know, this negativity, keep out um, others' thoughts and opinions that are not healthy for you, the more that you can then thrive, the more you can grow, the more you can get more and more in touch with who you truly are at your core. So these two things are intrinsically linked in, in my mind. And I was very excited to come and talk about how they do interact together, how that, how that fits together, and to hopefully be able to give you some tips on boundary setting. And uh, with anyone, you know, you can ask questions about whatever situation you may be in but just like how to really love yourself enough to have good boundaries. So yeah, so thank you, Lorelai. You are welcome, Shift Witch. Susie. Hey, yeah, so for me, these are not, these, well, I'm, Shift Witch is saying so many things that are on target, so I guess I get to build on it. Intimacy is not, is not exclusively a physical thing, it's not, you know, like Woody Allen says, it's not dirty unless you're doing it right. But um, it is more than that. It's being able to open your heart and to be vulnerable to someone and share that. And that doesn't have to be a relationship, uh, uh, like a romantic relationship partner. It can be anyone really, particularly yourself. As soon as Jamie said that, I was like, oh, okay, there we go. Thank you for giving me more direction. Um, but boundaries, it seems, boundaries have really been thrust forward into the light with, you know, with the past, well, now going on two years, we all have boundaries. We, we have been at a place where we are sitting with ourselves and looking and reviewing, what are my life choices? Who are, who do I have with me? Who's not with me? And how is that impacting me? So those boundaries, some have gotten stronger and some I haven't had to work on so much, you know, but there are things that I have found with some relationships that I'm like, mm, no, I don't want that anymore. And therefore they are calling for boundaries to be put in place. And then there are other relationships I have that it's like, I'm okay with this. And we are still growing. Like my whole family lives here. My five, the five of us, my three kids and myself, we're all here and we are all still working on that communication thing. And I think we're better for all of this that's gone on. Um, um, but there is, where else, what do, you, what do you all want me to talk about? So yeah, it's, it's again, working with yourself and, and being healthy and clear. Um, 
so many things have been uh, reviewed and we're looking to see if that sort of thing, like with Lorelei uh, wanting to make reparations, like, yeah, we have those relationships to look at and we have all sorts of relationships. So this is a great opportunity to talk about it and to be vulnerable. That's what this is about is being vulnerable, which is not weak for me. It is, I need help and I'm asking for help and I need clarification. And so for me, that is what intimacy is, is to be vulnerable, to be who you are at your core, and then to have whoever else is in that particular interaction, be respectful of it and supportive. Yeah, that's what I've got right now. Thanks so much, Lorelai, for providing all of these opportunities. You're so welcome. It's great. I love these panels, right? I get to share things I value about. I get to share things I value. I get to learn from all of our peers. All right, Henry. Uh, all right, uh, Lorelai, how many minutes should I put on here? Do you have a... I can't hear you. Two minutes? Okay, great. Two yeah. minutes. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, so, you know, what Susie said, what uh, Shiftwich said, love that name, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, never mind. Uh, so on this subject, um, I think, so I, I made some notes because it's a huge subject and uh, <laughs> life size, right? So, uh, so what I think what I can add is, of course, vulnerability, right? And so I think also sharing oneself authentically, like I've been in a, in a deeply intimate and connected relationship with my partner and, and husband for uh, 17 years. And, uh, and so I've been practicing what I'm going to be talking about, which is uh, being vulnerable is sharing the good and the not so good, and to be able to convey yourself to the other person, because oftentimes we're like, I don't know what's going on with you or sometimes they don't know something is going on but we have something going on and then how do you share that how do you say to the person hey i need x or hey i'm in this place right now well if we don't know that we can't share that so the idea is to be authentic but we can't be authentic if we don't know who we are and so how we can find one of the ways that we can find out who we are is through what uh, Carl Jung termed shadow work and shadow work is to look at everything within in ourselves, every, the untapped potential, uh, the things that we reject in ourselves, the things that we think we can't help, et cetera, et cetera. And for one great place to look is when we say that wasn't me, like I, that, that didn't feel like that was me. That is then something that's in shadow because yes, it's you, it's yes, it's me. And it's just something we're not owning. So shadow work is owning everything. And so what I'm seeing also is that as we own more and more of who we are, and I'm talking specifically about the things that we're not fond of, the more uh, we love ourselves be, as this becomes integrated, and the more we integrate that, the more we uh, can allow the other person to also have shadow. So what that means is there's much less judgment. And then that creates a safe space for the other person to be vulnerable. And now you are both vulnerable with, with each other. And that creates that tremendous intimacy. And the fierceness of that is that shadow is very fierce. That's why we tend to want to avoid it. And so uh, once we begin this, that we say, I'm going to love and accept everything about myself so let me see those things that I have a hard time accepting okay let me work with them that's the fierce part thank you and uh, also thank you Lorelai love this subject oh you're so welcome all right Daniel I think is next yeah intriguing topic to me I'm I'm glad to hear what Henry has to say about the word fierce because I've been sitting with this topic and I didn't, still don't necessarily connect fierce intimacy as resonant for me. So I'm interested to see what comes to me this evening. Uh, to me, I can certainly speak to the intimacy and healthy boundaries part. Uh, it's so largely about inner work and about personal responsibility for one's own, uh, managing one's own ship of life. To me, we're inescapably multidimensional, at the very least physical, emotional self, uh, thought self, and spiritual self. And to be whole, to be well, you need to be whole, and to be whole, you need to be well. It's not just this 
wellness of one part we can be like spiritually developed and emotionally got work to do and it, so the whole package is really what brings the strength healthy boundaries in uh, just a quick summary the quickest way i can phrase it is it's not about creating a hard shell of protection it's about creating a strong core of strength of truth of who you are who i am and radiating from that strong core which to me ultimately things fall into the category of spiritual work to me spiritual work encompasses emotional work uh, mental hygiene uh, physical wellness health practices and so forth it all comes together in that largest container of uh, spirit having a human experience and not ignoring parts of us that we don't want to face the, this kind of echoes the shadow work that henry was mentioning uh, two minutes is up i think i'll leave it there it's an ongoing thought process all right great um joy your turn again what else would you like to share about the theme well fears and intimacy to me is being from my work is setting up a uh, being able to be lighthearted actually in setting up a stage for communication about whatever is happening with you in the moment uh, that to me is missing in sexuality and to be playful and still fierce is I think makes it easier and to um, literally give directions if someone is touching you somewhat directions I think is uh, I appreciate that as a masseuse and um, basically the breathing techniques that I coach in uh, have been, you know, have been uh, developed by uh, people who were both psychologists in Europe and the guru in India uh, into making modern meditation methods, which would apply in this situation where basically what I call the OM is like, ah, it's like the exhale, which is so critical that we forget to do. And we just rush through life, especially if we're talking a lot, where we don't even take a breath. And so I'm really into helping people notice how their breathing is going if they're being touched and if they're trying to communicate about touch and if they are trying to do touch for someone. And of course, then there's also techniques that I teach, uh, which is a specific uh, technique from a book called The Multi-Orgasmic Man. And it also reflects on the woman. So I've been coaching that for since the beginning, 20 years, more. And it's amazing, and it's a three-step method. And it just takes practice, that's all. A little bit of practice, the kind of practice that people would like to do, actually. I just won't say the name of it. Self-pleasuring, I said it. <laughs> I couldn't control myself. <laughs> I got a laugh out of Lorelei. I'm glad. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. And uh, feel free to call me and we'll talk. Okay. It's great. You definitely got my attention. I'm like, what are you not going to say? Which word is this? And then when you said, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Well, I love. Um, talking about this now and it's great for me right it's like I cheat I, I get to go last I get to hear everyone else first so I have time to like like imagine what is it I want to say research what I want to say and um, yeah so I'll be I'll be duplicating some people I love what everyone shared so fierce intimacy so I decided to look up the definitions and see what are they really um, described as and so fierce right they all have several definitions 
fearsome, I think of being brave when I think of fierce. And first it says intense or ferocious aggression. And that's not the type of fierce that I mean tonight. And then it says heartfelt and powerful intensity. And that's much closer to what I mean tonight. And notice that it has the word heartfelt, fierce and heartfelt. So then intimacy, closeness, familiar, familiarity, friendship, cozy, an intimate act, such as sexual, sexual expression, a knowing, like a deep knowing. So putting fierce and intimacy together, heartfelt, powerfully intense closeness, right? knowing so deeply in a, in a powerful and intense and heartfelt way. Right. For me, connected in here is safety. For me to be, um, to be fiercely, for me to be fiercely intimate with myself, I need to not be scared. I need to be able to be um, sufficiently in flow with who I am. I need to be able to be so close to who I am. Um, I think someone, maybe it was Henry, talked about someone mentioned facing shadows, facing our shadow, um, being willing to face the parts of ourselves that we care to for been scared to see. Um, being intimate with ourselves is so important to being intimate with others. I think it's false intimacy if we aim to be intimate with others when we're not intimate with ourselves. We have to really show up and be here to be intimate with someone else. So, and also just thinking a bit about healthy boundaries. So I came up with healthy boundaries as the phrase for the original course I taught because part of my work with Robert Masters is about anger and the difference between healthy anger and aggression. Um, my, my other teachers, Katie Hendricks, talks about aggression as really it's fear fight. It's fear and it's a, it's a harsh, forceful protective that comes from fear. And that's not anger. Our society calls it anger. I don't actually think of it as anger. For me, anger is the healthy expression of yes and no. It's knowing what I want and don't want, being able to express what I want and don't want. It's uh, being aware to honor myself. And I think a healthy expression of anger is being aware of others, being aware of our impact. So knowing what we want and, and making choices in the context of, um, of impact, ourselves, other people, the environment, so many different things, right? Seven generations. Um, so healthy boundaries. So for me, being in touch with, um, for me to be in touch with my anger in a healthy way allows me to choose, um, create safety so that I can be vulnerable and heartfelt be here with all of my feelings, be here in my body and choose to be intimate and close, right? With more of me, with another, with a topic, with someone else's feelings. Me being connected to me enables me to flow with and dance with whatever anyone else might bring. And the aggressive and the harsh part, which is one type of fear, um, there's a stiffness and a, a, a a rigid and flexible aspect to that expression. It doesn't allow for the actual intimacy of closeness. Yeah, so I think of this emotionally, physically, um, even with my mind, am I able to be fiercely intimate with topics? Right? Really play with topics. So for me, play and the looseness, it's all connected in here. So flow, fierce intimacy and healthy boundaries is about flow with life energy and whatever else shows up. There's a bit of what, uh, what I bring to thinking about the theme, and I had no idea I would say that tonight, most of that. Yeah. So great for me to learn and discover, right, as I'm here too. Well, let's see, we've got two people in line. Let me, I'm going to post a little bit more in chat in a moment. I'll put every, all the practitioners' info again. If you wanted me to add a special, maybe let me check who I've got specials from, and I don't. I've got Susie's, I've got Jamie's, I've got Henry's. Daniel, if you want me to add one, let me know what it is. I've got Joy and I've got myself. Okay, yeah, so Daniel, if you want one, just let me know. All right, great. Yeah, so I've got, um, we've got, um, I think Kimberly and Pamela in line with questions. Before we jump into questions, let me say um, so a few things. So um, one is, and I know many of you have heard this before, when you ask a question, keep in mind that it's um, being recorded and will be posted online. When you ask a question, if we go deeper, um, we get more intimate. Um, in this setting than you want us to be, please let us know. Or if we start talking about other topics that you don't want us talking about, you have a boundary about that, let us know. So we request that you do your best to stay connected to yourself so you can let us know if we cross a boundary. Yeah, so uh, just uh, 
Yeah, it's great that we're talking about boundaries tonight. So I like playing with the language of the theme. So it's really what we're asking for all the time. Do your best, right? I believe in always doing our best. Um, so just let us know either, um, let us know ahead of time, give us some guidance as to how you want us to answer or unmute and let us know, wave your hands in Zoom, chat, write in chat, anything like that. We also, um, I believe, I think all the other practitioners believe too, we're all potentially all open and intuitive and we might receive messages while someone else is asking a question. We request that you do your best to allow the attention to stay up on the panel. You might wanna write down any insight that comes through you because often the messages are fleeting. And then if you want to, when we're done answering someone's question, you might choose to private chat them and ask if they'd like to hear what came through for you. Again, practicing healthy boundaries. You're making a request of intimacy and being able to share. And you wanna know what their boundaries are so you don't accidentally cross over them. So ask first if they'd like to hear what, what came through you and please honor whatever their request is. Please know and trust, do your best to um, not take personally and know that they're doing their best to honor themselves, setting a healthy boundary for themselves. They may say, yes, come share. I wanna be intimate about that. And they may say, no, I, I don't want it right now. And trust that this came through you for some other reason. So yeah, so if you, if you have something general, something just really important that you wanna share in the chat that really adds to the conversation of all of us together, feel free, you can include that. Just please be aware that um, the primary attention should be up on the panel. Some of the practitioners, after we answer, we might write a little bit more in the chat and some answers or comments on what each other write. That's all great, yeah. And supporting each other, I'm thrilled for us all and all the participants, right? Support each other in this journey. Some of that may show up in chat a little bit too. Well, let's see. I think, yeah, so I think that's all we need to do to get ready with our questions. I'm going to spotlight people and um, yeah, they're ready to go. So we've got Kimberly and Pamela and I'll look to see if anyone else um, wants to wants to um, ask a question. I'll put more info in the chat. And Henry, I see there's something really important there that you put there in chat. Would you like to say something about that before we go? No, what do you, what four do you letter word. About? Huh? Love. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have anything to say. Uh, what I'm noticing is that because of the subject, okay, I always have something to say. It's just such BS. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> what I'm noticing is because the, the, the theme is fierce intimacy, and then I connect that so much with vulnerability in much the same way that you and many other people have discussed. Like this whole this whole space of vulnerabilities coming over me, and I'm just like, oh my god, I love everybody. And like, can I scroll? Can I scroll through and see more faces? And it's just, it's I just I'm so pleased and so grateful that we have this panel where 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 love can be so center stage because I think that's what it's all about. I think uh, uh, the power of love is is the is the power of life, and so it's funny that I. Uh, did a little thing saying like love to all of you may you have your fierce intimacy experience and then I left out the word love by accident <laughs> so, I realized I realize just this experience of being here together on these panels for every theme these are fierce intimacy healthy boundaries experiences right so people yeah. are willing to be fiercely intimate with whatever they're asking about with whatever others bring up in this public format and so everyone's choosing for themselves. Is this boundary okay? Can I be yeah, right. here creating safety for myself and be willing to be compassionate and intimate and connected with myself and vulnerable and asking and, and, and allowing info to be shared with me, perspectives to be shared with me, insight and healing. So yeah, we, we're doing this on the panel all the time, the best we know how, and we get to actually talk about it tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. Yeah, I think we're sharing love, right? This is a love bath all the time when we do our panels. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kimberly, you are the first up. Where are you? Can you see me? All right, yes, let's get you up here. Okay. Then, all right, great. Kimberly. What? Hi, how are you? Okay, so I have a question. So I'm going back into the dating scene. So I'm talking with somebody right now, but I'm very nervous about like, like, like when you get down to that, like the intimacy, the vulnerability, I feel like I'm more reserved when it comes to talking to it, talking about it, than when you actually get to it. And I, and I just want to know, like, um, like, like any tips or what you see, or maybe what the person I'm, I'm giving, like, I'm just starting to talk to somebody and get to know them and what you might see with that, give me any tips or, I, I don't know, like, we do, we have had a couple conversations, but I'm, 
more reserved about it. It's hard for me to kind of like, I don't know, open up about it until you really get to know somebody more, I guess. And <laughs> I'm having a hard time handling it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I appreciate you being here and, and asking your question. And maybe um, this may be my own, right? So I, my own, like something floated by and I didn't fully take it in, right? So I'm not fully in my body. Um, so you said you're dating again and you feel shy talking about, did you say specifically about being sexual or anything physically intimate or other topics too? Like what is... Just, just in general, I like, I'm just starting to know some people I haven't actually met them yet, but that conversation has come up, like the intimacy part. And I'm more reserved about it. And I don't know how to like, I don't know how to handle some of that when they're, they're asking questions and stuff. Because I feel like you should get to know somebody first. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's just, I'm kind of old fashioned that way. No, it, and it, I don't know, you know. Yeah, any tips or what you see for that for that suitor or you know or anybody in the future or anything just in general in the dating like with that yeah and I know and I'm kind of I'm asking questions about your question but I'm also jumping in at the same time a little bit I guess and so you may have no, two I, on, right you may feel some some nervousness and shyness and where you don't feel mm -hmm. um like powerful intensity in yourself around the topic and then you also may be having a little bit of like, no, something doesn't feel right here about this, with what's happening with this person, right? So all that might be going on. So I got ideas and other people already have their hands up in line. So we've got Susie, okay. Shippen, Henry. So, all right, Susie. Hey, Kimberly, how are you? Hi, hi, Susie. <laughs> so as you're talking and you're saying you're, you're getting back into the process and this is an opportunity, what I saw was, I mean, that's the word I saw was opportunity, not yeah. to not to be somebody new. You're not recreating yourself, but this is right. an opportunity for you to go further into who you are. They're asking questions, then you get to look at them and take this time since you don't have any sort of history of, oh, I can't talk that way because this is your opportunity <laughs> right. to say, I can respond this way because this is my ideal self. To me, that's a huge step towards intimacy is to have the, is to, to, to be there. This is who I am. And right. yes, it's up to them to decide if they like it or not, what, according to whatever, whatever rubric they go by. But as long as you're honest to yourself, honest and authentic with yourself, you've made great strides. I am kind of similar. I have a lot of old paradigms that I'm trying to get past and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you would think, but, um, but there are still some of those, <laughs> there are still some of those questions I have that I think, okay, now I can be my authentic self. So this is your opportunity to, to be your magnificent self. Right. And, and I encourage you to treat, oh, golly, now I'm choking up, son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> um, but now this is your opportunity to treat yourself as well as you deserve to be treated. Right. So you yeah, speak The whole dating truth. process is nervous to begin with, and then you throw in possible intimacy later down the road is you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still nervous. It still makes me a little nervous. Yeah, yeah. And so this is your opportunity, though, to be, this is who you are. And so that somebody can fall in love with you as you. Right. Not as some okay. sort of magazine cover or. Right, exactly. You know, some sort of character you've, you've rolled up, you know, ready to go <laughs> on your quest. Right. So, so I wish you well. And Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for going out there and doing it too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And I didn't mention practitioners. Please, if you could aim to keep your answers about three minutes or less, that'd be great. Susie did great. Shift Witch, you're next. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. So yeah, it is really fantastic that you are putting yourself out there. And that's that's really what it, it is, is, you know, you are allowing yourself that vulnerability, you're allowing yourself right. to reach out and make that connection with another human being. And you're doing so at a time when there has been a lot of physical disconnect. And so mm -hmm. the thought of like that physical reconnection, it's scary. I mean, a handshakes right. are kind of scary, much less sex. 
Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's not yeah, weird at all. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're definitely, you know, it's, I think it is completely normal and completely reasonable to, you know, really just communicate with this person, you know, or whoever you communicate with in the future, even. Right. But, you know, this is something that I need to ease into in my life right now. Right. Um, you know, you've had a lot of time to work on yourself, to think about things. Um, I know I've seen you at the panels before. I know I've talked with you before yeah. on one of the panels. And yeah. um, I can see the energetic difference in you even since the last time right. I talked to you. I can tell you've been working on yourself, working on things. Um, right. Your light is brighter. Yeah, thank so, you. So I'm trying. And I'm that trying. will, <laughs> you're, it's working. <laughs> so, you know, keep keep doing what you're doing. Keep honoring yourself above everything. Um, and, and remember that, you know, even if it doesn't work out with one person, you will find that right person. You, you you will find that light that is the same brightness as yours. And then it's just easy after that, (laughs) which I'm sure Henry can attest to also. (laughs) Yeah. I put the tag, I've been married for 19 years on, uh, on Tuesday. And so, yeah, when you find that right person. It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, just keep being honest, keep being true to yourself. That's all you have to do, and everything else will just. It's meant to be. Sense. It's meant to be. If it's not, then it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. The universe <laughs> is very good about leading and guiding. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you for that. You're welcome. That's great. Thank you. All right, Henry. Look at our timer. Oh, I love this. I love this, Kimberly. And yes, so bright. Like, I was like, is that Kimberly? <laughs> yes, it's Kimberly. Because it was like, is this a different Kimberly? <laughs> yeah. Because so, I've only seen you once before. So, a couple of things. I mean, it's actually, it's so much <laughs> download, hardcore. So, uh, the first thing that I heard from you is like, I'm like this and I'm like that, and I'm not like this and I'm not like that. And so I think that's not needed. I think that's kind of like a, a way of defending yourself when you don't even okay. need to defend yourself. You, you, you are how you are and you're not how you're not. And that you can have flux or not have flux. Right. And you don't have to kind of put that out in front to excuse yourself because you don't have to excuse yourself whatsoever. So okay. here's what happens. You're online. And I think for a lot of, t- a lot of times, I, I, is this a male that you're talking about? Yes. Okay, yeah. great. So a lot of times males have this concern that we're going to go on and on and on and we'd never even find out if we could be attracted to each other. And there's this pressure to, to determine whether, whether there'll be a sexual spark. And so they right. can go too fast for them. And then for, I mean, too slow for them and too fast for you. Right. Because right. it seems That's like- That's kind of what's have, happening, I think. It, right. There you go. So culturally men just have more of a concern. Yeah. But say, say it again. I said, and we haven't even got the first meet yet. Like, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so then what happens is, and, and check, check to see if this is happening with you, that, um, that you kind of um, uh, uh, banking your own sensuality because you, because it's going too fast and rather right. than just being your true sent, sent, uh, essential self, because being a central self doesn't mean you're going to have sex. Right. It just means exactly. you're being your central self. And then they can sense whether there's a connection. If you don't, if you right. don't hide that in order to slow things down, down, you don't have to slow things down because you can always say not yet. Okay. Wherever you, whenever you're there. And then uh, one real quick thing about old fashioned, um, you know, it's called old fashioned. That's another excuse. What's going on is that there are people <laughs> who are coarser about it. And there are people who are finer about it. There are people who right. are more in the, in the, um, in the body oriented and there are people who are also spiritual about it or, or right. other things as well. And in the public square, we have become a lot more coarse. So for a lot of us, that doesn't work and there's no need to defend that you're finer and that you're more refined and that you're more intimate and that you're more sensitive and that you're more spiritual about it right on. Just you know, have that in front of you because guess what? If the other person doesn't dig that, it's not gonna be good. Okay. So why even do it? Right. 
right? Exactly. So, so like we said, you know, be true to yourself and own unapologetically that you don't want to F, you want to make love. And to make right. love requires some connection. Let's build this right. connection and be sensual like while we do it. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. It. Chemistry for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When you're being your natural, sensual self, you will see. You will both see if the can. You will see. It'll answer the question. Right. Right. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Henry. Daniel. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. You'll notice. You'll notice I talk slower than Henry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> so this may involve some reframing that I'm going to propose to you. Um, okay. I heard that you're sort of stepping out into not new territory, but it feels like a new place, yeah. like with a new you. And right. I I didn't hear specific descriptions of this is so difficult, this is painful, this is so forth. I heard it as you saying, well, it's kind of uncomfortable. And I'm going to propose to you that maybe that's not a bad thing. Okay. And the tools. Well, in two arenas. In general, I might recommend you feel out into noticing, oh, I'm feeling uncomfortable now and spending some time with yourself saying what am i uncomfortable with okay this is this is all about learning about you even though it's there's another person involved i'm going to say the right. real richness is what you discover about yourself that is discoverable in this process of you know kind of going out into what feels like shaky ground to you yeah <laughs> And a little so, <laughs> and that's okay. That that's okay. Uh, let's see. How do I how do I want to phrase this? The process is important. There, I think it's been spoken to a little bit here before that there can be sort of a goal in mind, and that's fine. It brings you together, but really, it's a it's an opportunity to discover more about yourself and how special you are. And the way that that reveals is by going, I wonder what's happening in me now. And listening to your deeper self provide the answers. Okay. So that can be, I mean, one arena is actually in conversation with the person. I mean, that's kind of where things unfold in a, in a substantial way. And I might recommend that you can also practice by yourself spend some time where you can be reflective and not having to work with somebody else and role right. play. What if this person asked me this question? How would I respond? Right. And then as you're responding in this movie that you're creating, noticing your feelings, okay. noting them, not They're condemning them, don't need to condemn. And then noting, asking yourself like, is there something deeper there I should know about? So it's like this, upflowing well from deep within your core that's saying finally thank you for giving a chance for me to reveal myself to myself right those are broad strokes about um what i consider an adventure here i don't see any problem <laughs> if i can <laughs> put it that way you know, what did they say that that fear is excitement without the breathing you know so it's like <laughs> the, I think that was Fritz Perls that said that, uh, you know, this is an opportunity to that you feel a little uncomfortable is a good is in many ways. It's a good thing. It, in, it's that part of you is involved and the discomfort okay. is saying, here's how here's the entry point to get to know me. Please, okay. please ask me about myself. Right. So, I hope that makes sense. That's what comes to me. Yeah, right it, now. Does. it makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. Thank you. It's great. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, it's great going after you. Um, I realized too, one thing that I didn't say in the beginning that I want to bring up here, just so it's in the room and in the space. Um, my boundaries were crossed sexually as a child. And whenever our boundaries get crossed sexually, even when it happens later in life, even if it's not intentional, 
um, it can really uh, like shake up our own sense of safety and ground and safety in our bodies and ability to know yes and no all around this topic. So just knowing that that's here. Um, and I agree, Kimberly, you feel much more like relaxed and loose and playful and fun. And <laughs> I know that's a core essence of who you are. So I, I feel you more in your essence. Right. So I had some ideas similar to what Daniel suggested, some other ideas around that. Okay. Um, to simply get um, more comfortable in your body, to feel safe in your body, simply talking about being sexual, doing it by yourself first is great. So it could okay. be like if you um, let yourself imagine, fantasize, you know, just daydream about what it might be like to be sexual with someone and talk about what's happening out loud by yourself. You talk about what you okay. want out loud by yourself. And if you're sexual with yourself, talk out loud about what you're doing and how you feel. But getting more comfortable okay. being vocal while you're being sexual and intimate with yourself, that'll help you be more comfortable in general. And then with this person or with anyone in the same kind of context, Okay. You could, let me see. There was something else. I. Um, okay. Let's see. So. So you said you, uh, my own words here. You don't feel quite comfortable talking about some of the things that this person wants to talk about yet. So what are the right? Ways I'm a little reserved. I think. Well, it's just it's different. There's this difference right now. This yeah. person is ready, and you're yeah. not ready. Right. So, so what right. have you feel ready? I'm not saying to push you into that at all, but what would have you feel ready? Like, how would you, what are ways you'd want to know this person first? What are the kinds of experiences you'd want to have with this person first? Right. How might you want to be intimate in other levels first? Right. Emotionally. Right. Intimate. You might like start have... like step. Yeah. Like step, you know, just like, you know, I don't mind touching, hugging, kissing, start with that. And then you work your way. You know, like that. I'm not against that part. It's like the other stuff I want to just, the full intimacy part, I just want to make it known that it's a little bit down the road, but let me get to know you first. You know, let me, you know, even a hug or whatever it is, you know what I mean? The simple stuff first. And it's a, it's a spontaneous thing and that you may have some ideas and then yeah. you cover in the moment it's different. Right. Than, but even if you have right. then when you get with them, it's different too. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Even if you haven't interacted physically yet. So right, yeah. What, how would you want to feel intimate? I'm just going kind to of intimate, right? In in various ways before you even talk about any of it with this person. You know, what are the things that have you feel safe in that kind of context and feel a yes? Oh, and yes. And the, one of the other things I want to say too is uh, various teachers I've never heard talk about that we can't actually say yes until we can experience a full no. Right. So being able to really experience no is what allows us to feel a yes that's authentic. Then we know okay. it's really a yes, not a I should, I sort of, or <laughs> how we know we have a yes. Right. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so what? And I guess um, coming up with some phrases that you might write if it's in chat, or you might be able to say okay. if you're, not, when you're on the phone. Of um, I prefer to blah 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 before we before we talk about this, before we write about this. Okay, yeah. And that's actually, that's anger. It's setting a boundary and it's in a no big deal kind of way. I get right. so comfortable with who we are and what we want that it's okay to, to say that and share that and it's easy. It's practice. Right, right, okay. And if, if you say that, if you say, I'd rather, I'd rather that we, we talk more about some other things and get to know each other more before we talk about this and the other person right. is okay with that and they disappear, that lets you know really quickly that they're not a good match for you because they're not someone that honors your boundaries okay. in general. Right. Okay. And I noticed you're touching That's yourself good. all around here. And I, no, say, I got a little itch. I got a little itchy or something yeah. right here. <laughs> and I say, and I, I know I'm going over my three minutes, so I'm in trouble. But I say, oh yeah, I'm way over my three minutes. And touching over here, this is part of the zone that to me, you're in between two zones. So one is this is the anger zone. So this is the yes no zone of the body. <laughs> and then you're kind of touching into expression in your throat too. So I'm just imagining that there is some yes no that you're feeling right now that's wanting to come through, and that's why your body's giving you itches here. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that. <laughs> you asked, you asked about it, like a yes, no question. So it's perfect that your body's giving you messages here. And I right. I never even knew that, though. <laughs> most of us don't. And Joy, I just want to check in with you because I know that um, you haven't shared. Did you want to share something? Well, I noticed that Kimberly said in the first when she first started talking, she said, I'm more willing to do things than to talk about them. Did you right. say that, Kimberly? 
I, you did. I, I feel more comfortable doing them than talking about it, I guess. Like, yeah, I don't know. So, it, yeah, I understood. <laughs> and you know what? You okay. have such a bubbly energy that you could you. turn this whole thing around by <laughs> not, I mean, this isn't going to be perfect because you're dealing no, with a right. man. Men want to know if you're going to have sex with them. It's dumb. And they're going to do know. it all the time on, on a dating site. They're going to do it. And so you, you have to yeah. generally, you know, you have to see if you can turn it, turn it into some kind of an, a question and answer game with him. You know, I love okay. the word game because it's not too serious, you know, and, right. oh, you want to play a game? Okay. I might play a game with you. And then, <laughs> and then, and then the, in this game, you can present, you know, like, this is what I feel. This is when I feel really uh, 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 friendly with someone. And that's, that's the first thing. You're friendly, right? And, and you okay. know, this yeah. is what, what makes you feel friendly with someone? You ask, you ask him, you get him involved, you see? Okay. And then he has to jam it with that in his head, you know, and then you can, okay. you can, you can lead with the questions, you know. Uh, okay. okay, so I love, I love petting my, my dog. Um, <laughs> I like to be petted, but not like I pet my dog, right? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then ask him, you know. What, right. What could, what could you, what makes you feel uh, relaxed and sex sensual? See, because right. men don't think sensual. And I no. sound like I'm painting with a big brush, but that's because <laughs> I'm just, I know that not all men are like this. I know that, but I'm trying to have fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to turn it into a fun game and where you kind of, you kind of, um, uh, you play with him, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're playing and by painting it with a big brush, right? You follow what I mean? Yes, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So think of some, think of these, like, like Laurel, I said, think about things that make you feel a certain way and how you feel with the right. different things. And then write them down and think about okay. it, turning them into question and answer questions and how you can ask him a question because you have wonderful humor, you know? You, you're just, you know, and then, and then you can tempt him with the candy, you know, you can <laughs> in, indicate it, you know, you know, I am, in front of the horse. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I do tend to be rather uh, uh, sexual in person. First, I need to know answers right. to some of these questions, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I am normally to like a flirtatious per person, but like you said, they, you, like on the dating site, that's like the first go-to they get in their head yeah. for some reason. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, I'm like, slow down, cow cowboy. Let's get to know yeah. each other. We, we have to got to know each other, but that's been thrown out there a little bit too. So trying to keep yeah. a balance, you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And not many of us know how to talk about uh, sex. and be, But that's the advantage of what's going on now with COVID, where we're being right. pushed more into using our minds and the screens right That's how yeah. I see it. yeah right yeah for sure okay <laughs> i'm gonna blame it on the COVID. no i'm just kidding <laughs> you're gonna do what you're gonna blame, gonna blame, blame it on, on the COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah whatever whatever makes whatever makes him giggle <laughs> thanks Thank joy you. all no, right Dan, daniel's got something else to share and i'm i'm not so good at making jokes but i'm going to see if i can lean towards a joke from what you just said so what you just said okay. like slow down cowboy is perfect so you're like slow down cowboy i want to know where you ride on your horse first you know so so <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's funny i like it all right great daniel uh, what you said, Lorelai, in there somewhere triggered something for me where I realized, oh, gosh, uh, one of my special focuses is um, listening to our bodies. And so I'm going to bring this back to this is also an exploration of you with you in conjunction with another person and what they bring up for you to know yourself better. 
And one of the deep areas of being an embodied spirit is that our body is full of wisdom in the moment. Different parts of our body have different uh, expertise to tell us. You know, our gut can tell us something different than our legs and feet versus our skeletal system. There's, there's all of this really deep information that our body is all the time telling us, but right. we don't really know how to listen because we don't practice it. We think, well, it's going to talk to us verbally and it doesn't say anything. So it's a thing. <laughs> and actually your body is a living, is a, a living, ongoing living miracle. It's really the only partner we'll have our whole life long. So it's really in many ways at right. the foundation of any relationship you develop with someone else is this interior relationship of it. This sort of exploration leads to a falling in love with yourself deeper and deeper. And then it effortlessly flows out to who you're connecting to. It, it's kind of a bath backwards sort of a, a chain <laughs> reaction, but it's right. really, it's actually kind of the, the bigger view. We get kind of fixated on this other person and we start to lean outside of ourselves. If we can fall back in and just feel like with what I just said, where do I feel that in my body? And okay. what kind of a feeling is that? Is that like a clench of tension? Is that actually a flutter of excitement? Is that a, right. you know, some relaxation of relief? I got yeah. to finally say that, you know, there's all yeah. manner of uh, relationship building that your body is yeah. trying to do with each of us, right. you know, that's it's yeah. completely general. So I'll, I'll throw that in as you can have that as a separate project in conjunction with this, like focus with your person, the other person and okay. how that goes. Okay. All right, great, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel, for pulling in. Yeah, some more of those ideas. Those are great. Yeah. So yeah. Anyone else have anything, anything last bits to share with Kimberly or great. Kimberly, I love all the answers that you got. How do you feel about your answers? Um, I feel good. I, I thank you very much for that. It, it'll, it'll help um, for more conversations. <laughs> how, do, how do you feel in your body now after having talked about all this? Um, I feel good. I mean, I, I like, um, there's been like that fluttering in that too, you know, but I, I feel better. I feel better. Just like, um, I can't remember who it was Henry saying, be like, be yourself. And then, you know, if they're not comfortable with you being who you are or, or, you know, saying how you feel or being whatever, then that's not the right person. Or if that's all they want to talk about or they don't want to talk about other stuff, then yeah, that's not the right person. You know what I mean? So that's good to remind myself going back out there too you know what I mean mm. so I like we have a balance of stuff you know I want them to know me too you know not just that part not saying that's all that there it is there is but you know that's always thrown in there it's been thrown in there you know <laughs> yeah yeah so, I mean right the general question might be like what do you want to know about me right and yeah be about physical intimacy what do you want to know about me and yeah what he does yeah like yeah. besides that you know so that's kind of good too you know mm. I'll have to redirect, redirect some things, I think, a little bit, you know, and see how that goes. <laughs> but thank you for all your insight. I appreciate it. You are welcome. And Henry, did you want to say out loud some of what you wrote just there in the chat before we finish? Yeah, um, Daniel, uh, you were saying uh, how uh, our body is the one partner who's never going to leave us that we're always going to be with her I'm paraphrasing you and and uh, and this is uh, you know I really love you saying that and it's actually so true 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 it's not just philosophically true or spiritually true uh, I, I don't know how familiar we all are with um, the research that's been done into the microbiome which is um, the intestinal area of yeah. the body and how I'm familiar the with it yeah, you, mm -hmm. you, yeah, and so all these different microbes, and and it expand extends from there, like the knowledge extends from there. That uh, it's not just it around our t intestinal and stomach area; it's it's in around the heart. It's everywhere. So basically, our body mass. Uh, up to 80% is somewhere between 60 and 80%. The science is not sure 
where the number really is. It's literally DNA that does not belong to us. That's like, like Kimberly, there's your DNA and then there's the DNA of many different microbes. And it's like, like a, a billion of those and a half a billion of these and three billion of those. It's like literally a symbiotic relationship. And right. we could say that the, 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 the microbes are dumb, but you know, <laughs> we are <laughs> alive because of them. They're pretty dang smart. And right. my experience is that as the more I talk with them, it's been going on for years now, the more this amazing partnership develops exactly like what Daniel was talking about. That's very intimate and supportive. Like I respect those microbes. They're to me a manifestation of the divine too. In my case, that's how I see that. Or life, their own life. And, and we are supporting each other. And this is how we get to be this. So that's right. kind of what I was talking about in the chat. And, and I found that really exciting. And so we can get very real about developing this relationship with this body that goes, mm, you know. <laughs> Great. And Henry, in the chat, you have one other word that's super important for this discussion. It's a six letter word. And I don't know if any of us have said it yet. Maybe I didn't hear. Sacred. Oh. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, of course. Right, and yeah. ourselves, right? Our soul and our yeah. physical body, right? Sacred Absolutely. And with another, yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, it's like, for me, it's implied. I often don't even notice when I'm talking about that I'm not actually spelling that out. By me seeing the microbes and, and as their own individual life and, and respecting and honoring them is because I, I see them as the divine. And so that's, so they're sacred. So thank you for for uh, bringing that word out. Yes, sacred, sacred, sacred. And I say, and there's a I think like a continuum of how sacred we experience sexual connection with someone else too. Mm -hmm, yeah, right. right. So for some of us, it really is. It's very spiritual and sacred. And for others of us, it's like it's playing in the park, and it's as sacred as every experience that we have. <laughs> Played in the park. Yeah. <laughs> right, it, it really can be. So right in in right in, yeah. Going through my trauma, I've like I'm holding this paradox of like it can be the sacred thing where I so want our souls to connect and and as well as our bodies. And then also like, why do I treat being sexual differently than every other way that I enjoy being alive? Right. That's the way we look at it too. So yeah, I kind of hold both. And um shift witch, did you want to share a little bit of what you just shared in the chat too before we and I know we kind of go to the next question, but these are such great comments. I want to make sure we save them in this panel. Yeah, I, so I worked in um, a high school for 15 years, so, and even a middle school, so I saw, like, you know, what classes were available to the kids, and so, and just knowing in my own schooling, unless you decided to take a biology class, you know, or, or something about, and those were always high-level classes, we're not even given a basic user's manual for, like, where are our organs, what do they do? How does digestion work? I mean, like none of that. It's insanity that we are not taught how this beautiful vessel we live in just like the basic functions. And I said, you know, much less emotional, spiritual, mental, you know, <laughs> we get out of school and then we spend the rest of our lives going, well, how the heck does this all work? I don't even know what's moving and why. I don't know why I'm feeling this way. And so we spend like the rest of our lives if we are, if we get to the point where we're evolved enough about it, trying to figure it out then. So, yeah. So it's no wonder we're like half the time. Yep. Thank you. And yeah, Daniel, did you want to say what you wrote in the chat too? And then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we will shift. Go ahead. Well, I can just read what I wrote. People sure. tend to really like being around other people who are in a love relationship with their own body. It's just sort of a magnetic, delightful presence and an attractive uh, person to be around. And I feel like you uh, could combust, Kimberly, with that kind of uh, <laughs> passion for yourself, if I can put it that way. <laughs> Daniel, would you mind repeating that lovely little um, exercise that you told us in before about how you pay attention to what your body is saying. I want to get it in my head. Is this okay, Lorelai? Because you've also yeah, been wanting ahead. to move us along. Yeah, no, it's okay. Go ahead. 
Um, I'm not sure I can really remember it because things come and they go, but uh, basically the tool is self-monitoring and mindfulness of oneself and sensations. So when we, we're monitoring our thoughts, our emotions, our bodily sensations and spirit talking, all of that. So if we say something and we notice a sensation in our body, we go, oh, sensation in my body. What's that sensation about? And the body is looking for a partner to talk with and say, this is kind of what this sensation is. Or maybe oh. this um, emotion arises and then we can say, hmm, what is that emotion that feels like some combination of, of fear and excitement or whatever it may be? Tell me more body, tell me more being. So it's, it's an ongoing questioning of what we notice, but it, it comes back to noticing uh -huh. mindfulness of our own world. Yeah, so I said, like, Kimberly, you can practice talking about what your sensations are when you feel hungry, right? And what is that like in your body? And just get used to talking about your body. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Kimberly, so much hey, for jumping you. in and getting us started. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, we have two people for our next question, I believe, right? So Pamela, and then do you want both of you to come up? on spotlight um yes all right Sonia, you see. okay with that oh there you are okay got you i'm driving so um let me grab you up here and that way if you want you so if you want you can turn it off it feels safer to have your video off right now and then or you can just leave it on briefly it's up to yeah, you this yeah, well, I got it on for the moment, but yeah, there's a lot of traffic out here, so I probably won't be looking at the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Thanks for giving us a, a chance to see who you are. I know not everyone yeah. here knows who you are, so yeah, that's great. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm go ahead and do whatever's gonna... safe for you, and I also don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable looking, right, seeing you in the car or doing things, so. Okay, all okay. right. All right, so what is your question, both of you? So um, anyway, I you guys have seen us around. We've been around for a while. Um, Sonia and I met about um, six years ago, um, April of 2015. I was um, in a failing 11-year marriage, um, and we met via Craigslist. And we've just been really good friends. Um, during this time, during these past six, year, six years. And, you know, she's been my, like a mentor, a confidant, a best friend. Um, we've been those things to each other. And um, I'm, I wrote some things down so I would stay on track. <laughs> um, she, we just done everything together. She's, you know, introduced me to alternative medicine, um, metaphysics, therapy, alternative um, medicine, intuitive therapy, all kinds of things, Chinese medicine, just everything. We just, just really just opened me up to a lot, just a new way of living and um, just have been my best friend. And so we have um, kind of over the years become friends with benefits and we have been thinking about just taking it to the next level and just thinking about that, you know, just wondering just some opinions and how should we do that and how does that look? How could that look for us? Um, we're thinking about, we've talked about moving in before but um, we found a place and um, yeah, we're just really thinking about taking it to the next level. We're just wondering, you know, is it kind of too late? Have we been friends too long? Um, what could we kind of do? We're not really sure. I mean, we love being together. I'm the most vulnerable when I'm with her. I've, I have you know, I'm just a completely different woman 
you know, I've grown so much being with her. I feel that she's my soulmate at this point in my life, you know, um, as a friend. And um, it took a long time before we became intimate. We were friends for a really long time. And then we took it to an intimate level, which is beautiful. You know, our body and souls connect and it's just a beautiful experience. And um, I've never had that before in my life. We're both a little bit older. And um, yeah, we're just wondering how could we just take it to the next level or even if we should or if we should just stay friends or are we soulmate, soulmates or just friends, soulmates? Um, I think our biggest obstacle has been my, I have a son that'll be 15 next month and he has disabilities and she's not really wanted to raise him you know, at this point in her life. And so that's kind of been our biggest block. Great. And um, yeah, I appreciate the thoroughness of your, your share and your question. Um, your question in some ways isn't clear. It's clear and not clear. Maybe I'll just let us wander around and answer. And um, we don't have anyone else in line at the moment, as far as I know. If someone else has asked, wants to ask a question, please let me know in the in the chat. And um, yeah, let's go around and just get some answers and hear some flow about this. I appreciate you both being here and um, and asking. All right, shift witch Susie and then Henry. Hi Pamela. Hi Sonia. I was actually surprised when you started describing yourselves as friends. I just assumed as soon as I saw the both of you, because your energy is actually so beautifully matched. <laughs> I just sort of assumed you were a couple already. And when Most you kept describing yourself as just friends, I'm like, no, they're not. Are they? <laughs> no. Really? I don't think so. Do they know? And then when you kept going, I'm like, ha <laughs> they do know. <laughs> That's good <laughs> because they should, because they're really like right there. Um, and when you find that, oh my goodness, grab onto it. Hang on. Don't like that's, that is like beautiful, 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 rare, more rare than it needs to be rare thing when you can have such a deep friendship with somebody, especially someone who opens you up to all these new things that you didn't know about. Well, your soul knew about them they remind you of all of these things that are just really a part of your life and a part of who you are they they are someone who reintroduces you to yourself mm -hmm. and that is their their role in this soul connection in this lifetime oh. is reintroducing you to you like you're you're forgetting who you came here to be let me help you let me remind you and that's I exactly what that. you I guys are doing that Sonia has yeah. introduced me to myself yes hundred um, percent and so I mean like all I kept it was just like yes 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 yes, yes. like there's just like this chorus of, of yeses you know absolutely and you are going to stay friends because you're already friends and it'll be like my husband is my best friend um so it, it's not a one or the other they're not mutually exclusive they are beautifully together and you have this fantastic intimate relationship because you spent so much time just opening up to each other, getting to know each other, um, being who you absolutely 100% truly were. And like that, that is what it, this is what it's all about. Like this is what finding a partner is supposed to be is like, you know, finding that person that is just reminds you who you are, lights you up because you're both lit up and you're at that same beautiful, beautiful brightness. And so, yeah, this was, this is kind of just a, of course, <laughs> for me, it's just, yeah, you are, please continue this absolutely beautiful, bringing me to tears when you were talking about a relationship, please. <laughs> 
Thank you, Shift Witch. Susie? Yeah, that's the movie script, you know, and we became friends, and I'm just like. <laughs> I'm having trouble hearing you. Hold on. I'm having trouble hearing you. No, it's my microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> but I, you were talking and, and yeah, I, I agree with, with the shift, which I'm sitting here just tearing up, hoping for my ending. And my perspective on this is that you have done all of this hard work, all of this foundation work. You have seen each other in good times, in bad times. You've taught each other, you've learned from each other and you know about your son. So I would say, you know, as Shakespeare says, ah, oh, there's the rub. And it's not like you can chuck him. So he is a part of it and respecting each other's um, stances on it is important as far as whether it's too late or not. I don't think love ever comes too late. It comes right at the right time. Hmm. And so I'm, not going to stand in any way who am i to judge you have found somebody you trust deeply both of you have found someone you trust deeply you have been you were saying right um pamela that you you're vulnerable sonia has taught you how to be vulnerable and that's a precious gift that you have for each other so um to be as open about where your son is in his development and and where he is in the relationship is going to be that it's uh, I don't want to call it a challenge, but it's going to be an issue for you two to to talk about. And if you are going to take it to the level, you can take it to the next level with or without them. But this is your relationship. You two have worked really hard on it. And I am I am thrilled. I don't think that timing is a problem. You, you're finding each other at the right time and you're in a good space. And I appreciate you asking us about it. But we're like all the old like fairy godmothers over here going, yes, yes, you've got it. Go for it. You know, it <laughs> just sorry, Daniel, you'll be the I don't have anything appropriate to say. I'm sorry, sir. But, you know, we're all just cheering you on. <laughs> and um. I want the best for all of you. And I don't think it's too late. I think it can happen. No, I know we've talked to you. I think before, Susie, you said you saw us together in a past life. Oh, yeah. That was my note that I ignored. Yes, absolutely. You have, I, 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 and I did write that down past lives. Yes, you have been together. Um, has it been it's been in all in all capacities and all aspects of love so you've not only been family members but you have been partners you've been male you've been female you've been both or either and and this is a continuation of that i would say healthy relationship sort of thing you two are talking i'm seeing one that is rather medieval and there were castles and horses i think sonia was uh was like the um she you were a man at the time and it was chivalry and all of that. And it was courtly love where you had this foundation together. Um, you had a foundation and it was never consummated in that lifetime, but there was deep and abiding love with a little tinge of, oh, you know, the, the vapors and, and all that. <laughs> However, it's not been limited to that. You, that was this is where I feel this is where that foundational work that you've done now this is a holdover from that where you yeah. have worked together and I told her I said well maybe next life you know maybe we didn't get it this life maybe next time yeah because you know, we feel like we have you know met in previous life and we never got it together and so we feel like maybe next time I don't know. Yeah. No, no, I, I believe so. I believe it has been that you two, because of this bond that you have together, this bond of respect, 
respect and honor each other and, and that support that comes with what I consider to be a really healthy relationship. You do your thing, I'm doing my thing and we're doing our things together and it's all loving and healthy. I don't feel any jealousy that may have come from forward from any past lives. This is a solid foundation and that has been carried forward. This is an aspect of a relationship of love and love comes in many guises. You know, there's, I don't know how many words the Greek has for it. You know, I remember vaguely like, you know, there's brotherly love, sisterly love, um, community love, romantic love, blah, 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 all the different kinds of loves. This is what you two are exploring as, as soul beings. And yes, I do believe that you are soul mates. You are a part of the same soul, not twin flames, not mirrors of each other, but you are mates kind of like, well, yeah, like litter mates, you're, you're all part of the, you're part of the same group. And as such, you have uh, uh, kind of that, that entree into a relationship where you feel like you know each other and you can click and move on and move forward without all the BS that happens with ego and, and, and hurt feelings and all of that. This is, this is another uh, opportunity for you to decide where you're going to take it. Like you did with that chivalry, chivalrous lifetime, you realized because of the constructs, the constructs of, of the courtly life, you couldn't because I think, Pamela, you were married at the time. And so on, it's the night always going on things. Wait a minute. Hold it. She was married again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> again. So Sonia, think, that was in the past wow. life. <laughs> but I know, but here, this is the present life. By the way, my name is Sonia. Um, Sonia. Yeah, so here we go again. <laughs> but that life, that lifetime is when she hurt herself. Remember, she told us about I, that. Uh, well, I'm not but sure you, when that happened. By the it was horse. a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, but I think that was like maybe, maybe as a slave or a worker or laborer or something like that. That chivalry thing, that's not a... <laughs> Oh, you know, be chivalrous when you're laboring, you know. But, but, but I was also told one of my past lives, I was a male and um, I was like in the army or something. And I didn't really want to be, but that was, I don't know, you know, I guess that's the life I chose or whatever. But I know you wanna... weren't, you were hijacked into it. I was like, okay. see, there you go. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't want to do that. All I wanted to do was do my job and go home uh -huh. at night, you know? And so that's the same kind of feeling I had about the last, when I was working for the federal government. That was like, I just yeah. wanted to do my job and go home. And sometimes I couldn't do that because we were required to do overtime. And that's also probably what kept me from advancing further into management and things like that because I'm good for eight hours. Well, actually, I'm good for six. And the last two, I'm going to fake it. But, you know, <laughs> all the other stuff you got to do as far as being a manager and supervisor, I didn't want to be bothered. I'd have made a good manager and supervisor, but I didn't, I didn't want to be bothered. So, and yeah, I that think that's, sense. The life. that's the life you said you wanted to just come home. Yeah. To the family. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, and here we are with another another married situation. I always said I would never get involved with a woman that was married. And here we are. Yeah, so I don't, and I never, I never did. And in, in my, you know, in my youth and everything, I never did. And then, yeah, here we are. And there's always some complications around that. You know, there's a lot of moral yeah. And, and that's why we were just wondering, you know, is this right for us? You know, what do we do? Yeah, well, then some of us, some more of us want to answer. So I know Henry's got something to share and I've got something to share. And yeah, go ahead, Henry. Thanks, Susie. And okay, Henry, this is great. Thank you, Sonia, for speaking up because it, it gives me a clearer picture. So uh, I, I drew a couple of cards because it seemed like I needed some navigational help. And one was the tower, which, I mean, in, in this deck, it's lightning, but in a regular tarot deck, this is the tower which mm. is a, I, I call this a challenge card. Mm. Like your life is being challenged. And then the other one uh, from a different kind of deck, beautiful card, I love this so much, is um, the uncharted sea. 
Mm. And so I think that's where you guys are. I think that's what you're worried about. And, uh, and because you find yourself here and you're worried if that's in, if this is going to come to pass, if you're, you know, if you misstep, you're going to blow up the good you have and not get the better that you want. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm seeing is a couple of things. Um, I, I don't know anything about baseball except for this. And this pertains to this, that whatever is going on in the game, it isn't what it seems to be until the umpire says that's what it is. The umpire makes the call. Yes. Am I right about that? Yeah. So, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, great. So this is what we like. We like certainty. And so exactly. we constantly yeah. make the call. Like you, Sonia, uh, I, I, I said I would never uh, blah, 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 blah. And that is certainty. This is who I am. This is what I want for my life. This is how it's going down. And then you are met with life, which, yeah. <laughs> but then the interesting thing is we don't learn from life. We go, well, how can I impose this? I'm making the call. And once I make the call, it is this or, not, or that and not that. We're trying to impose that on this multi-rhythmic, polyrhythmic life. So I think um, you guys have a very difficult situation here that you want to merge closer together, take it to whatever you think the next level is, but there are some real hurdles. In this case, the disabled child, yes, that's a real hurdle for both of you. So the best that I can see, the sense that I kept getting is kick out the umpire. Just you don't have to play baseball. You can play the game of Pamela and Sonia and not call anything, anything. Don't call it the next level. Don't call it a lesser level. Don't call it this problem or that problem. Just like be with how you feel. Mm. Be with, is this, this feeling good? Okay, let's do that. Is this feeling good? Okay, is that not feeling good? Let's not do that. Like, let, like Daniel says, let the body show you how to navigate what you're doing with each other and stop calling it. I wouldn't even call it, I don't want to deal with raising an, a disabled child. And, and Pamela, I wouldn't also call it that. Just don't call it that. Because as soon as you call it that, now you have to contend with it as a, fast, as a hard reality. It's never as hard as that. It's always in flux and there's always possibility. Just, you, you get what I'm saying, right? I yeah. do. I don't know if Pamela does because she has, and there's nothing wrong with this. She she is at the point of her life where and she's always wanted a family mm -hmm. and she is you know she will tell you this herself and um so i made a comment a few a, a few days ago a few weeks ago whatever about playing house and that wasn't that didn't hit home too well with her um mm -hmm. she um you know she's always we've always met at at my place because mm -hmm. she's married and i can't go to her place mm -hmm. so she has traveled uh, for the last, except for COVID, the year COVID, and I was also having some back issues, so I couldn't drive. For the last three or four years, she's always been the one to pack up and come to me unless we go on a vacation or something like that. And she's tired of doing that. So that's the whole idea behind us um, merging households, if you will, and not playing house anymore. So I understand what you're saying. Pamela, how do you feel about that? I am... Um... I'm open to that. I mean, I like the way that sounds. Just let it be. I can do that. I just needed some confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. I and, and, I, yeah. and I wouldn't more. even call it house, playing house, because that's, again, calling it. Yes. We're going to just live You want to be in the same place with each other? Be in the same yeah. place with each other. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, avoid, the, because as soon as you call it, there's all kinds of stuff that comes with that, that doesn't need to come with that. Yes, you can, invent, you can invent something truly original. Okay. And yes, so this is what I did with that my way anyway, so I can just, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And and where this comes from is with me. This that's how my husband and I developed our relationship. We just refused. We we said we're both sitting in the back of the limousine. There's no driver. But is it still nice back there? All right. And mm -hmm. Little by little, it developed into the most beautiful thing that you could ever imagine. Okay. I like that. I like hearing that. Thanks, Henry. 
Well, yeah, so I have some related kinds of questions too. Um, I wanna say, Pamela, you, you seem to be very joyful like you have more flow and um, I know your body is moving even as you talk about the things that are difficult. And so I look for flow in the body as an indication, right, of what we're feeling. So those, those things seem good. So tell me a little bit about which reasons is why um, Sonia can't be in your house and is that Sonia well, for your choice or is it COVID or what is this? Hmm? Well, we've been welcomed. You know, my son's father, he and I are separated. We are still legally married and we still cohabitate to raise our son. Right. But we are not together. So and he, in the beginning, he would let her come over here and she could stay and she would come. And, and we've all even taken a what I call a family vacation together. Mm -hmm. um but so, so why does they it get along they did and then some other things happened and that but it wasn't Sonia's fault it wasn't it was okay, um, so I'm he's not, not allowing it now no but at some point he did he was okay but someone else interfered and that's not Sonia's fault okay so but my entire family accepts Sonia my mother everyone that's all great everyone. I want to know so he's not allowing it right now and then oh, so wow. is um so I, let's see so I know change is probably a big deal for your son so, yeah. so Sonia, if Pamela's son was willing to be somewhere on public with you or to come to your place, would that be okay? Yeah, I've taken him, I have, he and I have gone places before, like, you know, Chuck E. Cheese and uh, Mod Pizza, we both love that. I've taken him out and babysat him. Um, there was a time when, you know, Pamela was going to school and, uh, and, her husband was at work, his dad was at work. And so, you know, I watched him for several hours. Um, he hasn't been over to my place in a while. This is when he was a little bit younger. So he was kind of a handful at first when he was younger, um, but he's calmed down. Right, he's and, been maturing. I know he's been maturing and yeah. changing a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, you know, and he's, he's, a, he's a kid, you know, regardless of everything else, he's still a child and, um, you know, but he's, he's a cool kid and he's very, very smart. Yeah. And so Pamela, I'm, I'm imagining that he's, um, and I know that uh, he's probably a few years behind, right? It's his, his age and development. Yeah. And at the same time, I know he's on a big growth curve right now. Yeah. So is he wanting to have less, less connection with you? Is he starting to get a little bit more independent? He is, he's, he's actually connecting more with his father. Mm -hmm. So during that time of me going back and forth to Sonia's, that was a good time for him to develop a closer relationship with his dad, which was good because he and I, because I was his primary care provider, there was no autonomy. We were, you know, it's like, who, where do we end and, you know, stop. And now I'm seeing more and more independence and more connection with his father. So that's really good. Great. So, so about how many days a week are you not at home now? Um, uh, well, during COVID, I've been home, but lately about three, three days. Okay, that's great. That's great. So if you got a place together, would it be somewhere relatively nearby? And then would you yeah. spend some nights together in your place and some nights in, in the house where you are now? Yes, he could yeah. come. That's the plan. He would come with his dad some nights and with us some nights. Yeah, that's great. The, the second year I was dating women, I was dating someone who was doing exactly that, staying in, well, at that point, she was staying in her own place half the week and her, her kid's place with her ex-husband half the week. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then eventually she moved in and was actually living in my house, and then the kids started coming to my house too, and yeah, so just like a whole range, so you're definitely in the zone of like lots of things that other people do. Okay. Yeah, and I guess, and so you adapt. you adapt it well? Yeah, 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 so uh, okay. long journey, it was long ago, and uh, to say, so Sonia, how do you know so if Sonia, are you able to just want to make sure, how do you know how much you want to get involved in, in raising him and how much you don't want to get involved? Like, how do you, how do you have a sense of where that is? <laughs> um, I know that. You know I which? I give you a number. I, so I, know the answer to, I know the answer to that question. It's a two-part question. And so the answer is yes and yes. Um, I can't give you a number like 40, 60, 50, 50. No, it's great. And kind of what I'm looking for is if create, so you and Pamela create some sort of kind of some version of like a continuum 
of like, I, I want to do these things. I don't want to do these things. You know, I, I feel okay. I feel good about this. I feel okay about this. I'm not sure. And I know I don't want to do this. Like talk about that in all kinds of, of areas of, of, of his life. So you, you yeah. step into this with, with more awareness and more knowing, right? You have a chance to be with it with each other before you're in the situations with him. You can't cover everything, but like some big areas, I think it'd be good to explore that. And, you know, right now he's wanting more independence, Pamela, and he's connecting more with his dad. And like a year and a half from now, he might want to connect with you more than two, you know, and just, so just have some awareness with each other as you step in that this may happen. You never know what will happen. It's just so you, right, just going in more with, with your eyes open that way, your heart's open that way. You know, and Sonia, what, what, how you feel about all that may change too, as he changes and he grows. You know, you still may never wander over here, but, you know, instead of here, it may be here at some point or. No? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm not his mother. I've never pretended to be or anything like that. So my connection with him is totally different than his connection yeah. with Pamela and his connection with his dad. And, you know, I've told Pamela this and I was told this by other intuitives that I have high expectations. Mm -hmm. So I have to remember that within his limitations, mm -hmm. but by the same token, you know, and she and I have discussed this, that I think he can, he can do more than he is um, not allowed to do, but you know, he can do more, but he's a teenage, first of all, he's a boy. He's a teenage boy. I remember when I was a teenager, there was things you didn't want to do like wash dishes and you know those kinds of things but i know he's capable of doing that because his dad has right. has been training him to do those kinds of things but yeah i i know that i would and i do expect more of him and treat him differently i don't harm him or anything like that i keep him protected when we go out like i would any child like i would you know if he if i bore him in my in my womb but by the same token, I guess I just have to maybe just, you know, look at self as well as an adult yeah. so, and be okay. Because my, my way of raising children, because I've raised children, is a little bit different than Pamela's. I was going to say, so this is where right, it's a bit of a paradox. On the one hand, you yeah. don't want to get in you don't want to get involved in raising him and you have opinions about how to raise him. Yeah. So that, that's a tricky thing. So this gets into really your acceptance of Pamela. Mm -hmm. yeah and then entrusting my parenting because she does say that I I baby him too much but I'm his mother you know I'm gonna well, do, well, do I, I want to just get across the, problem, the, the two the of you are different with that. the problem well, the, with that babying him I get that because my mother babied me she spoiled me until the day she passed away and I was you know it's a, so 50, 50 years old but so, for him when you she calls him baby, mm -hmm. and in his head, he doesn't distinguish that. So I have Anya. seen his inner change when she says, my baby, or oh, baby. He actually starts acting like a baby. So Sonia? Rather than taking, rather than embracing it, that, hey, that's my pet name. So you know Sonia, in the so, way I see yeah. your eyes and Pamela's eyes, mm -hmm. Sonia has eyes that love to baby people. And I bet your mother also had eyes that love to baby people. And you don't, you're a little bit more like me. We're a little bit more tough and structured. So about any topic, chances are you and Pamela will have differences about this. Yeah, yeah. And so part of the opportunity here is if you're wanting to get more intimate with Pamela is to choose to actually be more intimate with Pamela as she is now, as she grows, but as she is now, who she is and how she is. The more we enter into a relationship where we're attempting to push the other person to change or grow, in my experience, it causes challenges. And I personally have experienced this both ways. <laughs> okay. And I, I guess I should take that same advice, right, Lorelai, not expecting her to change either. Right. If you're wanting to soften Sonia and Sonia wanting to firm up you, like that's <laughs> set up for a because she does she does spoil me I mean she does have a soft side for me now a lot of people don't see that but I know her soft side mm -hmm. but that's not something that she exhibits or shows to everyone and I want her to show it to you enough that's the important thing wait wait say that again 
Sonia, I want you to show your soft side to Pamela enough. Mm -hmm. You all get to determine what enough is. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, Lorelai. Well, of course, she likes that because I. <laughs> so, I, really I mean, I've raised, I've I've raised children, and so and I, I don't have any of my own children, but the children I've raised, I spoil the hell out of them. So mm -hmm. I do baby, in my own way. Right. And so yeah. So and, I, you know, and I and I have baby. I have baby. I have babied her son because one day we went out. We went. I told them we could only do one thing. We ended up doing like four things and we ate. We went bowling, we went to the arcade, we went to Chuck E. Cheese, we went to my, I spent over a hundred dollars on him. Now that's not a lot of money, but it is because he got every freaking thing he wanted. He did everything he wanted. And of course in his head, that's supposed to happen because he's a kid. Yeah, yeah, I'm supposed to get everything I want. You know, so I've babied him in, in my own way and he and I, if I, if he was here right now, he wouldn't turn down anything that I said, Hey, let's go do. So he's not going to turn that down because he's a kid, and that's that's my way of, of babying him. And every kid is different, too. So, some yeah. yeah. I want to, and I know I'm taking extra long, I know you two really well, relatively well. There was a, one other thing I was going to say, Oh, yeah. So, so something I recommend that you do is that you give yourself some experiences outside of the house, away from him, where it's not your space, Sonia. I think it's important that the two of you enter space independently. It might be you stay somewhere on vacation. It might be a place yeah. you rent on vacation. It might be you stay at someone else's house. Like I'm, I'm gonna be gone for a weekend. You stay at my house. Like find places where you can stay where you don't have it set up where it's someone else's place and they've already set things up. You wanna get used to making decisions mutually. And we did. We just came back from a staycation last weekend where we stayed at a hotel for three or four days. So that was really nice. Yeah. And like you can play with taking turns, making decisions, taking turns, choosing what you do, taking turns about how you do anything in the space and the house. So. I brought him over one day, the yeah. first day, and then yeah. the rest of the days we had to ourselves. So, so as okay. long as you, you enter this into this, uh, like a growth opportunity, right. For both of you and how much you can grow and be more true to you, which is getting more strong and getting more flexible and like a whole mixture of all these things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, and by the way, so this, this person that, um, oh goodness, it was a, a fairly fast relationship. We didn't stay together all that long. What a big journey though. And so many things. And, and I'm still very connected with her. She has since dated someone else that I helped connect her with. Her daughter grew up and lived with me for a while with a group of friends when she was 21 and she's worked for me. So yeah, it totally can work in like long-term relationships. So yeah. That's cool. <laughs> That's a long okay. Okay. All right. So let's see, not everyone has shared. Does anyone else want to share? Right. Great. Anything else? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Pamela. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank if anyone you, else had something else, okay. Great. I just want to make sure. Okay, enough of us went. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's check and see if we have more questions. We didn't last time I looked and we might now. Yeah, so we are taking questions on fierce intimacy and healthy boundaries. Are really anything we are happy to share our wisdom and our insight on any question you might have. And let's see, as uh, PayPal is coming up for me to check. Nope, I don't think anyone else has asked another question yet. Oh, did Joy have anything for us? I was hoping. Unfortunately, Joy that. had to take off earlier, so oh. she didn't. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping to hear from her. <laughs> yeah, well, and um, I, I can, I'm, I'm like channeling Joy, right? I can kind of imagine Joy a little bit. She wants to know how much fun you're having. And she wants to know, like, in a really good way, if it's spicy, right? Do you feel alive when you're together? Right? These are the things she cares about and wants to know. So why would you step away from feeling more alive? And, and we do. We have a really wonderful time together. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's great. It's great. All right, sweet. All right, well, practitioners, we get to make up whatever we want if we don't have anyone else in line. Let me go get the information again for paying to ask a question. If someone wants to ask a question, we would love to have the opportunity to answer it. So it's 16 to 24 sliding scale or $10 for BIPOC. If you'd like to ask a question of the panel and we are available to bring all of our wisdom and insight to whatever you'd like to ask us. 
I'll put the information on the practitioners in the panel again too. Remember, we all offer specials for doing work in private with you as well. And I deeply appreciate the two people, three people that asked questions and let us answer in the recording. That's great. Supporting the rest of the community, hearing the answers to our questions. Lorelai? Yes. I think I would like to add in something. It can be a global observation because we kind of moved on, but it came up for me in uh, when Pamela and Sonia were uh, in with us. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's kind of a for completeness comment that isn't, you know, diving deep into the personal details, but more something to even keep a larger perspective because there may come times where this trips you up or gives you uh, challenges and you go, oh, I remember that challenge can lurk. And that's when there's a, what I call a multifaceted relationship that's going on. It's not just one part of us connecting to one part of them, but this rich mix of so many different parts of us are activated or challenged or both. And then when we then begin to, for example, move in together, where we're even spending more time together, there's just the natural tendency to begin to narrow our field of vision and almost make the whole world about the other person without even realizing it. So it's kind of suggesting the, uh, how, do I, how do I put this? The self-corrective stimulus to go yes and open up the blinders and go big wide world, lots of people to meet. It doesn't change the connection that I'm feeling here. It's just, I can be more enlivened for my relationship with my primary other as I keep breathing with the rest of the world. I just know that when I moved in with my wife, we started to naturally look to the person who was most nearby, who we've had so much, uh, you know, so much relationship with, how about this area too? How about this area too? And forgetting to kind of connect with the rest of the human race, who's part of ex circles of friends. I don't know if this is communicating. It's not necessarily speaking specifically to Pamela and Sonia. It's more just like for completeness, you know, here's additional things in the uh, wide range of human you know, possibilities that we have. We can narrow in when the richness is right here. Yeah, I think of it as and, like not expecting that one other person meets us and everything, right? And realizing that we can, we can create relationships with other people and we can feel fulfilled in those relationships with other people while we have such deep intimacy with a partner, like a primary partner, is that? Yeah, that's a fair restatement. And I, I make it a practice to keep reminding myself every time and again, going, ah, yes, nourishing, important, and just testing. Is there something else out in the world that's trying to get through that intensity that I got with this other person to make us even richer as individuals? Yes. Great, great. Well, yeah, so if there are any general topics that we want to discuss, or if, if anyone that's here with us has some general topics we can explore around the subject, we're happy to do that too, while we're seeing if anyone else has a question they want to answer. And uh, we can always, our question they want to have us answer, we can always end a little early today too, I'm open. We're almost towards the end, but. Hmm. I guess what, one topic we, we haven't talked about today that your question, Daniel, just brings up a little bit too, so. Um, Totally not my specialty, but I have some awareness. Um, just the idea of poly and open relationships and just all sorts of range of different ways we connect with people. So we don't typically talk, it's just, it seems like a topic that doesn't come up a lot on our panels. We don't usually talk about context where that's so. But yeah, I just wanna make it clear like we, I, I like my aim is to bring a, an openness to our panels where we're, we're open and, and accepting of so many ways that people um, connect and explore in the world. Yeah, great. Okay, so Shift has something to share and Henry has something to share too. Yeah, so um, one of my former students from like second year I was teaching in high school, she is in a throuple. There's 
the three of them, her girlfriend and well, actually wife and husband now, they actually just um, did a, I guess technically it's a commitment ceremony because it's not legal marriage, but they got married just a couple months ago, I think it was. Um, and it was just really neat. Like I've got to watch their journey from when they all, it was the, uh, it was my student and her girlfriend. And then the gentleman came in to the relationship a little bit later, even though the one girl knew him from a long time ago. Yeah. And so it was really interesting for me to watch like the evolution of this because it was the first experience I've ever had with that. I didn't know anybody else who was in a relationship like that. So it was really neat for me to know someone who I knew really well um, in an earlier part of her life and then to watch how she grew with this expanded relationship as she got older um, and then eventually got to get married. Like that was just, it's just, it was just a really, really beautiful thing to watch. And just like, from my perspective, having never seen that before and getting to witness it in somebody who I knew and really cared about um, was really interesting. And I really was grateful that they shared what their life was like and how um, everything evolved and so it was a really, really wonderful thing to get to be um, a witness to how that unfolded. And then the other thing that this made me think of was, you know, we have been talking so much about sexual intimacy and things tonight. Well, there's also people who identify as asexual now who don't have sexually intimate relationships. It is all very mental, emotional, spiritual with each other. But saying so sometimes it's romantic and sometimes it's not. There's also a romantic. So some people that are asexual exactly. are romantic and not. Yes. There's this like beautiful, beautiful, humongous spectrum. And it's funny because it's always been there, obviously, but it's not something that's ever been talked about or like brought out into I don't want to say mainstream, it's not main I guess that's what it is. It's not mainstream. It's becoming yeah. more commonly known and it's not yet. Right. Because people are starting to be willing to talk about it and to say, you know, this is how my life is and I am happy in this life. Mm -hmm. And then other people can be like, oh my gosh, that's me too. I didn't know that I wasn't the only one, you know? So it's like this really like beautiful visibility that's beginning to happen. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I just love that there's like this really beautiful spectrum to humanity that isn't so binary anymore in so many different ways. Yes. Thanks for sharing, Henry. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a really great topic. The the um, like, for instance, I am much more romantic than I am sexual. In fact, for me, sexual can't happen without romantic. I mean, it, it could, but I wouldn't know for a million years why I would, because I'd get nothing out of it. And I, I don't believe at all in that we should do something for somebody else if it, if it gets nothing for us at all. And, and I don't mean that's a, that that's selfish, but it's like that's self-care, right? So uh, about the poly, you know, I think that we're in this extraordinary age, and we have probably been in this age before, certainly. Uh, before World War II in Germany during the Weimar Republic. You, some of you may be familiar with that. It was an extraordinary time where um, uh, homosexuality uh, was much more allowed and, uh, and gender bending was called, was allowed and uh, being trans was allowed. And so there are these times when, when things get freer and then sometimes there's backlash and then we got to go back a couple of steps and then then work for it. So I think we're in a time right now where we're getting a lot freer to where uh, people don't have to just be married to one person or married at all, right? Or or have to uh, have sexual relations or not. It's just really, uh, if you look at fashion, it tells you so much about 
what society looks like because the, it's like do we have the 2010 fashion not really it's like everything goes you can dress like a hippie or like a bohemian or like a, a business person or anything in between um, men can wear women's clothing you know with some resistance and women can wear men's clothing with much less resistance and you don't have to be a particular gender it's just uh, the, the, some of the best times i mean it wouldn't look like we have best times but some of the best times and what i find is and, and this goes back to what i was calling saying earlier not to call it not to say it is this or it is that because then we're locked in and you know this human spirit does not like to be locked in and the animals don't like to be locked in either nobody wants to be locked in everybody wants to be able to live the life that they were meant to live whatever that looks like and so i think like for instance with steven and myself we were in uh, before we ever got married we were in in a very big um a sex positive community in which um polyamory was um a, a, just a natural part of that and uh, it didn't seem to be any problem other than, you know, sometimes, I mean, when you juggle two relationships at a time, it's more to juggle than juggling one relationship, but on the, and sometimes triangulation can happen where two people gang up against the, the, the one person. So there are certain issues, but everything has issues. And Stephen and I were saying to each other, well, uh, we're, we're not going to say what kind of relationship we're in. You know, we, we're together. And and we have tremendous intimacy because we've done the work to, to have that. We've done the work to know ourselves and to know each other and, and to, to come together in this spiritual and physical and emotional sense. But we didn't say we're going to be monogamous or, or, uh, or not, or polyamorous. And, and uh, we really meant it. So uh, do we live in a, in a monogamous relationship? Well, let's put it this way. We're not seeing anybody else. Why? Because we really dig each other. We dig each other more than anybody else. So we have friends, but we 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 like what we have. We don't want to. We don't have no desire for something else. But I think it would be very different if we had said, "Oh, we better be monogamous," because now we have to push against something. Now there's something restricting us. So I think that there is nature and then there is culture. Monogamy clearly is culture. I mean, there are animals that are monogamous, but humans are not those animals. We're not naturally monogamous. So we are because we dig each other so much. Um, somebody else might be because they want to protect what they have. And that's a good way to protect it. Why are we married? We're married just for, for society, not, not, not for propriety, but for society. You know, if, if I get sick, he can come to the hospital. Or if I can't speak for myself, he can speak for me. There are some real reasons why we, we are best protected if we are married under the law. And that's the only reason why we are. So because, I, again, you know, I see a shift which you're, you're nodding. Yeah, so, so I think as long as we know why we're doing what we're doing, and so long as you know why you're doing what you're doing, and so long as you have the maximum amount of freedom for true self-expression, that's a good thing, as long as it doesn't harm someone else. Obviously, sometimes uh, self-expression can be harmful to others. So, you know, we're in community. And so we make allowances and we make adjustments for community to be healthy. So looking at, you know, what we need and what the community needs, because ultimately what the community needs is also what we need, because we're not in a vacuum. You know, even if we get what we want, but the community is screwed, then we're, we're going to get hurt by that. So, yeah, that's that's my sense that we are naturally polyamorous. And if you want to work that out, you work that out. And I think it's so cool not to say what you are and what you're not. So yeah. even like, go ahead. I was just say I think of it as like maximizing safety so that we feel alive. Right, yeah, and you having a lot of freedom is what feels more safe and more alive. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, I, I would not never have liked to think that I can't be with anybody else if I, if you know, something happened. But I would think twice about it because of what I have. I want to protect that. And I think isn't that great? If if it's not like, well, no, I'm supposed to. Rather than, well, I want to protect what I have. That's a completely different way of approaching it. So, so that's what I and and I've seen it in my community and the not in the sex positive community. I've seen it how how wonderful it is for people and and for some it isn't and then they get out of that. Yeah, and there there's 
the sex positive community has done well connecting online for many years and uh, lots of communities in all kinds of cities, lots of connections yeah. for people. So, yeah. And I saw also the sex positive community has um, had the healthiest conversations about STIs of just about anyone mm -hmm. that I know too. Yeah, it's, it's so a lots of consciousness and awareness and care and honor of each other. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like when you talk with people who are practicing polyamory, there is so much more knowledge about relationships and about what there is to give in order for it to be whole. It's not about what to get. And people sometimes think that, oh, somebody is selfish if they're being polyamorous. They just want to be with a bunch of people and, and, and not that pay the price. It has nothing to do with that. I mean, to polyamory is a much higher level game. It's, it requires a lot more of people. So some of the most, the wisest relationshipers are in the polyamorous community. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we found a place to fit some of this topic in, in a panel, so in this panel. So yeah, this is great. great. All right. Well, yeah, anyone that has anything else they want to share, jump in or we're getting to the end and we can maybe introduce ourselves again and, and close up. Great. All right. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for being here, um, for all of you being on the panel and for everyone being here with all of us. And the questions that were asked today were lovely, rich questions. Great for this theme. Um, yeah, so I will, uh, let's see, I already put some information in the chat about our upcoming events. Maybe let me say a little bit of what's coming. We've got on Sunday, two days from now, we have a learning circle for opening and expanding your gifts. There will be four of us offering exercises for expanding your intuition. And three of those practitioners are here right now, myself and Susie and Henry, and we'll also have Kendara. So that'll be a great opportunity to do exercises with us. We have them all planned and we're so excited to do them with you. That is from four to 6 p.m. So it's in the afternoon Pacific time. And then on Tuesday, August 31, that's in a week and a half, we have animal communication and healing. Sunday, September 12, we have a panel on intentions, prayers, and affirmations. Thursday, September 16, we have another fair with about 15 practitioners. Sunday, September 19, we have a panel on reclaiming our power over sexism, harassment, and abuse. So some themes related to tonight. A very exciting panel also. And then we have in-person fairs in the Northwest coming um, now in October. So the first one's going to be in Anacortes. It's about an hour and a half north of Seattle on Saturday, Sunday, October 9, 10. And then we'll be in Linwood in the Seattle area, Saturday, Sunday, October 23, 24. And then we go to Bellevue, happens to be the next one, the other side of Seattle over here on November 13, 14. And then we'll be in Portland, November 2021. So that's some of what's coming up here in the Northwest and online. Um, let's see. So we have two practitioners that were here early that I think are not here right now. I want to make sure that I share about them. Let me do that first. So we had Joy with us. Her specialties are sacred sexuality, intimacy, and Tantra. You can find her on the web at tantrabytelephone.com. She got that website like, I mean, like, 20 some years ago, like when the internet was first just getting going. Um, she's at jubileehaha at gmail.com. That's J-U-B-I-L-E-E-H-A-H-A -E -E -H -A -H -A at gmail.com. And her number is 425-482-6025. And she is offering two for one phone sessions. So $75 for two phone sessions. And she does a, like a 10 minute or so um, intro. So you can get to know who she is and what it would be like working together. And then we also had Daniel Steinmetz with us, a moving deeper wellness, conscious body work and mind body wellness consulting. Um, he's a licensed massage therapist, movingdeeperwellness at gmail.com. Um, yeah, so that's Daniel. And then, great. And then, all right, let's share about who we are. Um, should we go in the opposite order now? We could go Henry and then Susie and then Shift Witch. All right, Henry. All right. This has just been wonderful. As always, so much enjoying it, and I'm getting tired, so I'm kind of glad I get to take a rest now. So I am Henry India Holden at henryindiaholden.com. If you want to set up a session with me, I uh, do life coaching, spiritual directing, tarot readings, and uh, there's a special that I offer $50 for 50 minutes or $30 for 30 minutes. And also I make available a free conversation that you can schedule. You can go to my website to um, booking and then from there it will take you or you can just go to Henry and sorry at calendly.com forward slash Henry India H. And then you can see the uh, 
uh, the sessions. So what else am I want to say about that? Yes, you have a class. Oh yeah, yeah. And I have a tarot class. Yeah, I cannot wait to teach the 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 just the perfect little group of people about the tarot and the way I've I've been taught by an eighth generation tarot reader, Gaia Hawken, and uh, so pay that forward. And so that's in, on October 16th, it's three consecutive three hour classes. So you can also become a part of that. And um, my specialty, I work with people with everything and anything. I mean, as long as it is legal, you know, I, I'm not going to be a therapist for someone because I'm not a therapist. And so that's very important to distinguish that. But in terms of spiritual guidance and coaching, and uh, I work mostly with people who want to either identify their purpose or the div their divine mission because they're just not clear on it. And I help them find that and we find it every time. It's right there, it's, it's in plain view if you know how to listen and then develop steps on like how to manifest that. And I also work with people to uh, deepen or, or make more keen their relationship with the divine or whatever that is for them. I call it the divine or G hyphen D. <laughs> I've kind of gotten away from calling it the whole G O D because for some people that's such a trigger and I honor that. That's important. It isn't one for me anymore, but it used to be. So I, I res highly respect that. So I work with people in deepening that relationship and in, in, in the way that, that works for them and that speaks to them and that nurtures them and empowers them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Henry. All right, Susie. Hey, I'm Susie Parker Goins of Blue Lightning Healing and Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. I'm a channel who brings divine through to you in an accessible way so you can clear the path for a more heartfelt life. I also do energy healing and past life exploration, uh, all kinds of things. I've got a podcast, uh, Blue Lightning Healing Meditations, and you can find me at bluelightninghealing.com. You can contact me at Susie, S-U-S-Y, at bluelightninghealing.com. And my special for this is sign up for a 30 minute or an hour class uh, for an hour session and you'll get 20% off with me we 20 in the uh, discount code. Thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing everybody again soon. Bye. Thanks, Susie. Shift Witch. Hi, so I am the Shift Witch <laughs> and I, for tonight, the special I'm offering is to just come and chat with me and see how I can help you, whether it be joining in in a movement class, whether it be coaching, whether it be uh, oracle card reading, whatever it is. Let's just get together and talk about how it is I can help you move forward. Um, I am also, I started offering moon journaling classes at the full and new moon. So if you're somebody who's into the moon, I'm very into the moon. Um, <laughs> Come join me for those. I actually give you some prompts for journaling. I give you some prompts for card pulls. We'll do a real nice moon meditation, love leaping meditations. Um, and that happens on whatever day the new and full moon is that, that is on my calendar though. And you can find those events at theshiftwitch.com. You can also email me directly at theshiftwitch at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, just, Get a hold of me in whatever way is easiest for you, and we can talk about how I can help you move forward in your life in the best way possible for your highest good. And thank you, Lorelai. These events are always so much fun. And I love Susie and Henry. Like, you guys are so much fun to be on panels with and stuff, too. So <laughs> It's great. It's great. And I'm Lorelai Schmile. I'm an intuitive eye reader, a body psychology coach, and I apply this to all kinds of topics getting to know your soul, your soul purpose, expressing your purpose on your career path, understanding people you're in relationship with and matchmaking, right? Great opportunity to have um, fierce, what is it? Fierce intimacy and healthy boundaries, right? So being intimate with you and the world, right? While having healthy boundaries along the way. So conscious online dating. So we talked about meeting people online tonight, like all kinds of tools and all kinds of ways to be authentic in how you share who you are, know when something works for you and doesn't, and um, how to see the people that are likely to be a great match and connect with them in ways that um, increase the likelihood that you will connect in an authentic way. 
You can find out more about me at laureliesshamayo.com. That's L-A-U-R-E-L-I-S-H-I-M-A-Y-O.com. My sessions are 40% off being here tonight. So 100 an hour or $60 an hour for BIPOC folks. Do my part in making reparations. I'm excited to have you all here with us and for many more of our events. We have lots going on at mewefairs.com. That's M-E-W-E-F-A-I-R-S.com. And if you haven't already, if you fill out the form that's listed in the chat and give us feedback about tonight, we will enter you into a drawing for a free 30-minute session with one of us of your choice. We have that in the chat earlier. Hopefully, we have people already fill it out. We're excited to connect with all of you. Thanks so much for supporting our community, asking questions, listening, being witness. We do this all together. Well, thanks everyone for being here on the panel. Let's, I'll go ahead and unspotlight us. Wish there's a way to do that. There we go. And put us back in gallery. I know there's a few of us here right now. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Um, appreciate you all being here, creating this together. All right.